Your Shampoo, a miraculous ladybug fanfiction written and narrated by Miro Rose, with artwork by Elisa, better known as SealSolart99 on Instagram. Their Instagram is linked in the description box. As you might be able to tell from the title, this is a compilation video with all three parts of this mini-series. So if you like Mary Shad and half reveals and teasing and banter, keep listening. Please enjoy Your Shampoo, the complete mini-series. Part 1 Cat Noir sat in Marinette's bedroom, smiling to himself as he kept the secret he dare not say aloud. Marinette was Ladybug. I'm so grateful you're here, Cat, she said, running a measuring tape across his chest. None of my friends were available. That's what I'm here for, to be your friend, he echoed, straightening his back. Hold still, will ya? He did as he was told, letting her manipulate his body as needed. He was lucky to be here in the first place. He'd taken his time over the last two months to become her friend as Cat Noir organically. Was he any closer to her as Cat Noir than as Adrian? No, but the mask came with its perks. Any plans after this, princess? I told you, stop calling me that. Marinette ran to a pattern and traced out the measurements. Who is this for, anyway? For you, ultimately. His heart skipped a beat. For me? She didn't look up. Yeah, you've become somewhat of a partner over these last two months. And it wasn't easy, that's for sure. If only she knew just how much of a partner he was to her. What are you making? Keep it cool, Cat Noir. You're literally the face of Vogue, both wearing the mask and posing without one. You're on the top teen idols list twice. The girl you like, making you something, shouldn't cause a meltdown. A hooded blanket. He blinked twice. A hooded blanket? You know, like the one from my Pusheen box that you steal whenever you come over. Like that. Excuse you, I don't steal it. Uh-huh. My shoulders enjoy its company. I know. It smells like you when you leave. You smell it when I leave? Weirdo. He would do the same thing if he had the chance, but not if it was someone he didn't like. Marinette spun around, face pink. I didn't mean it like that. Oh? Like what? A sandwich-eating grin was on his face, pleased at the trap she was caught in. I, uh, well... And what do I smell like? He asked, helping her out of the embarrassing moment they created. Uh... It was enough to get her to calm down. Like cinnamon and apples, I guess? <laughs> apples? And boy. You smell like boy. He made a frog face. What's that supposed to mean? Marinette shrugged. Cinnamon, apples, and boy. You're a combination of the three. You know what you smell like? He wasn't done teasing for the day. What do I smell like, Cat? Her voice carried a laugh, like she was teasing him. Ladybug. Had he gone too far? Perhaps. A part of his head was desperate for her to know that he knew who she was. If he did, then wouldn't she allow him to reveal his identity to her? Wouldn't that be okay, then? Weirdo she said, smacking him with a piece of scrap fabric. What, do all girls smell the same to you? I'll tell you what girl smells like when you tell me what boy smells like. You're probably going to say something like strawberry and peaches, huh? 
No. He walked up behind her and put an arm around her shoulder. I was going to say shampoo. She visibly stiffened at his touch, like she would have if he were Adrian. Oh, no. Had he messed up? He drew his arm back like a hot iron, hoping it wouldn't leave a mark on their relationship. Shampoo? She laughed and fixed her hair. Judging by that mop on your head, I'd say you're quite sensitive to hair products. Yeah, I know my way around them. Good. This wasn't too awkward. They'd recovered. Any recommendations? She tossed her hair sarcastically. Well, let's see. He leaned in and sniffed, forcing her to crack a smile as the ends of his hair tickled her neckline. Oh my gosh, stop it! She laughed. I don't think you need to change anything. I like your hair as it is. Uh-huh, she said, rolling her eyes. I need you to be a model again. Don't you already have one of those? One of what? A modeling friend. She rolled her eyes. I already told you I'm making this for you. <laughs> Whatever you say, bug. The two of them froze at his slip of tongue. He waited, his back to her, as he listened for her reaction. But nothing happened. When he gathered enough courage, he peeked over his shoulder to see her standing, palm to her forehead. How long? Time to cut his losses. Two months. Is that why you befriended me? Cat hesitated. No. Really? Uh... She sighed, setting down her measuring tape. So you know. Yep. How? Your shampoo. Really? Yeah, I recognized it at school. Marinette narrowed her eyes. School? Uh-oh. Uh... Don't... She held up her hand, looking away. You knowing who I am is enough of a breach already. Are you going to take my miraculous away? He heard her take a deep breath. I don't know. Please don't. She squeezed her eyes shut. I really like you, Cat. Boy, was this the wrong time for his heart to start fluttering. But? I don't want someone else's Cat Noir, so... Elated, couldn't describe what he felt. So I can keep my ring? Marinette nodded. As you see fit. He all but tackled her, wrapping an arm around her shoulder as he pressed a kiss to the top of her head. Thank you, Mare. Watch it! She laughed, clearly shaken by her own words. Kat took a long sniff, to the point that she tried to wrestle him away. Stop smelling my hair, you weirdo! Shampoo, he corrected. I'm smelling your shampoo. You'll smell my foot if you don't stop it, she laughed. Yeah, yeah. Want me to braid it again? Oh, would you? She slid her ponytail holders out and handed them to him. A plate, if you could, please. As my lady wishes. It felt so good to say that aloud. A weight he'd been carrying had been lifted from his shoulders now that he didn't have to bury the secret that he knew her identity inside of himself. I wonder why you smell like cinnamon, she said, eyes closed as he combed her hair, their usual evening ritual when he happened to be over. I'm sorry? I'm pretty sure the apple comes from your shampoo. I'm trying to figure out the cinnamon. Oh, easy. 
My deodorant. Your deodorant? Marinette looked up at him ever so slightly. Of all the places to sniff, you went for the armpit area, huh? It's a blanket cat. With a hood? Surely you can figure out where arms go. Marinette rolled her eyes and sighed. You said you go to my school, right? In not so many words. I'm going to look like such an idiot tomorrow. Why is that? He set the brush down to tie the hair together. Because I'm going to give every boy a good sniff. Discretionary sniffs are optional. Cat tried and failed to not laugh. <laughs> My lady, you are resourceful. But you know you could just ask me, right? Where's the fun in that? She looked up after he twisted the band one last time. I mean, you figured me out by scent alone. Surely I can do the same thing. I'd bet all nine lives I have a better nose than you. Whatever. She tossed her braid and stood up. Mario Kart? He smiled. I wouldn't miss it for the world. And so they sat together, playing their go-to game and poking fun at the other for it. It was as close to perfect as an evening could be, and Kat knew that all it would take to bring the memory back would be the scent of Marinette's shampoo. Part 2 What in Camembert's glory are you doing? Adrian felt his face grow red at Plague's inquisition. I'm, uh... Putting on deodorant. This is the seventh time today, kid. Plague hovered in front of him in the school bathroom, letting out a burp that sounded more gentle than it smelled. Yeah, well, Marinette hasn't... He lowered his voice. Marinette hasn't, well, you know... Sniffed you out yet? Yeah, that... It was nearing the end of the school day, and although she'd practically draped herself across the school, she was none the wiser he was Cat Noir, because she'd barely gone within a meter of him. At this point, there was nothing more he could do to smell like himself, and he could feel a rash coming on. Oh, what a dumb reveal. What if she gets the wrong guy? Plague asked fishing out another piece of cheese from his bag. I'll fight him. You're hopeless, kid. Perhaps, but Adrian was at his wit's end. Grabbing his things, Adrian pushed himself out of the bathroom and down the steps, taking a moment to pretend to check his phone as he passed Marinette to create a natural linger. It didn't work. Her focus was on some guy a year above them, Great. Part of him wanted to deck the tall, somehow handsome brunette wearing too many rings, and the other half wanted to spin her towards himself, take her cheeks in his hands, and yell that he's who she's looking for. Both weren't great options, and he decided to check out instead. I'll see you tomorrow, Marinette, he said placing a hand on her shoulder and leaning in a little too close. He made eye contact with the guy she was talking with, who suddenly stiffened and said goodbye to her as well. Good. Get out of here, you- Yeah, see you Monday, Marinette said, slipping away from his touch. Was that it? His heart melted into a puddle of sorrow at the thought. Did she not check him out because she didn't want him to be Cat Noir? Did Marinette not want him, Adrian, to be her partner? No, don't think like that. Marinette's a friend, and a good one at that. You don't know that. Don't let your insecurities overwrite your realities, Adrian. Well, only one thing to do now. Adrian forewent his piano lesson 
which was a shame because he'd practiced quite a bit and hated doing his teacher dirty like this, and went to the DuPain Bakery. Mask on. Welcome back, Kitty Noir, Sabine said, pressing a light kiss to his cheek. There's banana bread cooling in the kitchen upstairs if you'd like some. Thanks, Mama Chang. The thought of bananas brought a smile to his face. He'd had hours of fun teasing Marinette about banana grest, and it was now a banned subject. He got a pat on the back from Tom as he made his way upstairs, ignoring the whispers from customers gawking at him. Who's to say Paris's superheroes don't like carbs? He entered without knocking, a form of intimacy he could get used to forever. Sub, Ladybird, he said, catching Marinette's eyes before flopping on the couch. Think fast. She chucked an apple at him, and it was like nothing had changed, despite her knowing he knew her secret. What am I, Snow Black? He joked, taking a bite. It crushed his hopes when she opened her mouth to reply. So I still don't know who you are. Oh? Mm-hmm. I'll have you know I wore extra deodorant today. She leaned in. Wow! Do I smell like me? No! You reek! Excuse you? He bolted upright, suddenly hyper-aware of his body. I'm serious! She laughed. You smell like a boy who tried to put on cologne for the first time. Is it bad? Ah. Be honest. I'm not about to sit next to you during our gaming sessions. Cat sighed, defeated. May I borrow your shower? You know you don't need to ask. I'll grab an extra towel. His heart warmed, as though that were the reason his cheeks were pink. Thanks. No problem, partner. Her voice trailed along the title, lingering in the air like a half-gate. On one hand, he could jump over it. On the other hand, it might be a gate meant to prevent him getting into a certain area of her life. <sighs> if only she knew who he was... If she was trying to figure out who he was, couldn't he tell her? That would be easiest, wouldn't it? Wait. What if she wasn't trying? What if there was some part of her, subconscious or not, that didn't even want to think that Adrian was Cat Noir? Not this again. Now the thought was there rotting in the back of his brain as he scrubbed layers of deodorant that could last a common man two weeks out of his armpits. Was he the problem? Or did she not jump to conclusions like he did? Sure, he didn't figure out she was Ladybug just from her shampoo. It's not like she was the only girl who used... He looked at the bottle on the shelf beside him, but couldn't make out the brand name whatever honey, vanilla, shampoo, and body wash she used. Sure, you can't fake the underlying person smell, but what if she didn't recognize him by smell because she didn't want to recognize him? The thought almost put him in a loop of overthinking, but instead somehow reassured him. Perhaps it wasn't that she didn't think Adrian could be Cat Noir, what if it's because she didn't want to know who Cat Noir is, despite her actions, as it might change what they had between them? Granted, what they had already changed because of him, but it was nonetheless a more comforting thought than his original conclusion. Okay, Adrian, think straight. It's time to be a cat again. Plague's protests wrote the soundtrack of his post-shower transformation accompanied by a plop of camembert falling to the floor. Where did he even get that, anyway? Speaking of plopping, that was on his to-do list. He ran a towel across his head and let it sit there, making his way to Marinette on the chase and plopping beside her. 
Did you not dry off? She asked, flinching away from the droplets landing on her forearm. He shook his head as a response, flinging water at her as she laughed in protest. Define dry. You're ridiculous! Marinette grabbed the towel off his head and gestured to him to sit on the floor in front of her. He nearly purred as silence passed between them, her hands massaging his scalp as she towel-dried him. Do you remember fighting stormy weather? Cat asked, eyes closed to the world. Yeah? Why? It was the first time we'd fought in that kind of environment. Just running through the storm-darkened streets. Not quite amateurs, but still rookies when it came to the whole superhero vigilante thing. Yeah, why? She slung the towel over her shoulder, finding a comb from whom knows where before running it through his hair. I think I've been chasing that high ever since. So wild and careless and scandalous. Play Kingdom Hearts with Oreos in your bra. Cat's eyes flung open, and he jerked his head to look at her. The comb tugged in pain, restricting his movements. He looked at her, mouth open but not gaping, as he tried to process her response. It'll feel wild, Marinette continued, a grin on her face telling him she knew how ridiculous she was. And careless. And... She lowered her voice. Scandalous. He could all but hold his laughter in. Well, we don't have Oreos. Will chocolate chip cookies work? You get to decide what bra cookies are, Cat. You're the master of your fate. And do they have to be store-bought or homemade? Well, we are above a bakery. Also... I don't have a bra. That sounds like a personal problem. He unzipped the top of his suit by a few teeth. Wild, he repeated. Careless, he pulled the zipper down another two. And scandalous, he whispered. Marinette slapped a throw pillow on his chest to cover up all of the one centimeter, perhaps two, of skin he exposed. Wanna go make some? Scandalous cookies? Always. Milk or dark chocolate? Cat sighed with regret. You forget we aren't allowed to bake together after last month's incident. That was your fault and you know it. I'm not the one who decided to make a chocolate chip mountain. I'm not the one who knocked it over. Well... I'm not the one who... Actually, no. Wait. He was the one who melted chocolate all over the new butcher block countertop. Well, it was a team effort, but he took the fall for it. It didn't matter. Marinette turned on the hair dryer, and it would have blown his words out anyway. The whole hair drying ordeal was nearly therapeutic, and his hair always had an organic shine and bounce when she was done. You smell nice. She murmured, her head all but buried in his neck as they shared a blanket. His hair was dry now, and they were curled up together watching an American show. Zoe's Extraordinary Something or Other. He couldn't remember the title. Anything with more than two words was too long of a title to remember. I smell like you. He rested his cheek atop her head taking in the scent of shampoo he'd used barely an hour ago. Hmm. You smell pretty. Thanks, princess. Cat adjusted his shoulder, careful to not disturb her, and wrapped his arm around her waist. She was nearly asleep, and it was almost time to leave. But he wanted more, even if it were mere moments longer. Mere moments. He wanted more than that. Cat wanted more than this, and that scared him. For the longest time, he would have given anything to be here, with her, like this. 
but somehow he'd warped. This wasn't good enough. He must be the most selfish person in the world, because somehow his heart ached even more than before he knew who she was. He was greedy for her. Greedy in a way he couldn't articulate, and greedy in a way he was sure no other person was for another ever before. Good night, he whispered, hearing her breaths deepen. He turned his head, lips hovering millimeters above her forehead before pressing them to her skin. It was soft, as to not disturb her, but it laced his chest like a warning sign, and he had to get up to take a breath of air that didn't smell like her shampoo. Okay, Adrian, breathe. You'll be okay. It's not like she's broken your heart or anything. Calm down. Calm the cat down. But how could he be calm when he was washed in her shampoo? Part 3 Okay, today's the day. Adrian gave himself a pep talk in the bathroom mirror ten minutes before classes were scheduled to start. He got a new cologne over the weekend and made sure to wear it when he went over to chill with Baronet. She even asked if he changed his body wash during an Akuma fight, so she'd recognize this. Right? Well, maybe. But nothing else worked so far. Adrian sucked in a breath and doused himself with a spray nozzle. He may as well have taken a bath in this stuff, because now the boy's bathroom smelled like teakwood and regret. At least he could brush it off as a prank on Nino gone wrong if he got sent to the principal's office or something. Oh my bees, what is that wretched smell? Ugh, ridiculous. Utterly ridiculous. Come out, whomever you are. My father will hear about this. Adrian felt sweat prickle under his arms as he walked in the classroom. Chloe had her hand over her face, eyes narrowed for the source of the smell. I don't think it's that bad. Someone must have just sprayed it or something, he said, making his way towards his seat without eye contact. Adrikens, you must leave. I'll make sure whatever uncultured, dirty tomcat that's stinking up the room will be tossed out onto the street at once. Oh, no. In the midst of dousing himself in cologne, he'd neglected to put on deodorant, and now he was sweating. When he had bad ideas, they naturally developed into something worse organically, didn't they? Today was the embodiment of a sigh, and it wasn't even eight o'clock in the morning. Oh, cat... Adrian whipped around to see Marinette covering her nose and looking like she needed to relieve her stomach of its contents. There's a cat? Alia asked, following her in before scrunching up her face. You need to get your nostrils checked, girl. This is a skunk. Where's Princess Fragrance when you need her? Chloe asked. Her comment was met by a glare from Rose before her face softened and she nodded in agreement. Well, he couldn't make it to the door without crossing the now squad of classmates, unified in their disgust of how he smelled. Yikes. There were no solutions to this that would end in his favor, huh? Oh, you know what? Marinette piped up. I think there's a broken bottle of cologne in the trash. Adrian, how about you take it out with me? He looked at her, eyes wide but she didn't make eye contact. She knew. She knew he was Cat Noir. For how long? Had he made a fool of himself this whole time? No. Last night she said she didn't know who he was, and she wouldn't lie to him like that. He should be grateful she gave him an out instead of questioning her motives. My lady he managed to choke out as they bulleted their way to the bathroom. She turned on her heels, 
a finger to her lips like a bug lecturing her cat. Not here, she said, shaking her head. He nodded, swallowing, and let himself into the washroom as she stood in the hall. Wow. It was that easy, huh? Why didn't she let him do this before? Well, he knew why they weren't supposed to know each other's identities, but that's dumb. A bag flew in after him with a white t-shirt in it. His gym bag? How did she get- Actually, this was Ladybug slash Marinette. Never underestimate how resourceful she is. So, uh, you know, he said, knowing she was listening from the other side of the door. I suppose I do. Any thoughts? Not really. Not really? Was that a good or a bad thing? He washed up as quickly as he could before popping his head out the doorway. Am I not what you thought? Her face was already pink before he asked, her hand covering her mouth and nose. Adrian sniffed himself, wondering if he still smelled that bad before she responded. I can't believe I turned down Adrian Agrest's advances. Yeah, Chloe would kill you if she knew. Well, she'd also turn down Cat Noir, so that brings me some small comfort, I suppose. <laughs> Why do you feel bad about turning me down all of a sudden? Are you having second thoughts? He said it in a teasing manner, but he meant every word. I just can't believe I turned down not just one, but two of the top ten teen idols. Adrian laughed and gave her a gentle nudge. Should have trusted your instincts. Or my nose, she shot back, her lips turned upward. It was clear she didn't know what to say next, so he took the lead. Will you date me now? Huh? He took her hand in his and stepped forward so he could face her instead of stand beside her. Was he nervous? Oh, more than Plague was when he didn't know if the cheese was gone, but he had to know. Do you want to date me now? When she didn't respond, he pressed further, bringing her fingertips to his lips. Will you go on a date with me, my lady? A soft whimper escaped her, and he couldn't understand why she looked so scared. But all the anime he'd ever watched led him to this moment. Adrian leaned in close, his nose nearly brushing hers, and closed his eyes. It felt like an eternity, but a few seconds at most passed before Marinette pressed her lips on his, her hands sliding into the locks of hair curling on his neck at the collar. Oh, Camembert. She was kissing him. Adrian bolted back in surprise. Anime taught him what to do, but not what it would feel like. He wanted to run away, face flushed, and live with the consequences of his actions, but the betrayal on Marinette's face kept him grounded. Instead, he cupped her chin and leaned in, kissing her for the second time. And, oh, Camembert, it was magical. So magical that for a moment, he couldn't smell the cologne plaguing him as his skin itched. Oh, not at all. For that moment, that instant, all he could smell was her shampoo as her lips tasted his. When they broke apart the second time, they were breathless and wide-eyed, a moment of panic before their faces split into matching grins. Yeah. This... They'd be all right. What's the brand of your shampoo again? I can't recall off the top of my head. Why? He grinned as he took her hand to lead her back to class. Never mind. I'll find out later. W weirdo? Marinette squeezed his hand tighter. 
The words rattled in his brain, but Adrian knew better than to say it out loud. He found what he wanted after all, and the words echoed his desires. Marinette, Marinette, he thought. I want my days to feel like the smell of your shampoo. Thank you so much for listening. That was Your Shampoo, a miraculous ladybug fanfiction written and narrated by Miro Rose. Give this video a like if you liked it, and hit the subscribe button for more miraculous ladybug content. Don't forget to hit the bell, and for bonus points, leave a comment in the comment section. It helps the YouTube algorithm. If you aren't sure what to comment, put Your Shampoo. I'll catch you in the next one. Bye!